Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. For this one, we're gonna do a white chocolate paneled bark inspired bottom tier, an evergreen forest green top, and I'm gonna show you how to make some edible moss. And we finish it off with a gold splatter and some gold, they are actually gumballs. So stick around, we'll get right to it. To make these white chocolate panels, I am just gonna go ahead and I melted regular white chocolate chips. You could use, use whatever kind of chocolate you want, but I wanted to go for the white with the forest green and gold for this themed cake, for the theme on this cake. So I just melted it in 30 second increments until it was a pourable, spreadable consistency. And then I just poured it on, this is parchment paper, because we're gonna need to remove it. And all I did was spread it about the same thickness all the way across, and then I just used my spatula to make that little zigzag pattern. And then put it in the refrigerator to chill for about a half an hour. And then I'm using my mat and my ruler to cut these panels in the same size. I'm kind of using the markings underneath on the my quilting mat. This is a self-healing quilting mat that has all of your markings on it and my ruler to just mark out each piece. And then use my ruler to cut it. I would have just gone with two inches like the ruler is, but that would have been too wide, I feel. So I did, I think they were an inch and a quarter to an inch and a half pieces. And then just put them on something else to get them out of your way. Something there is stable that they're not going to uh, bend and break on. We just set those aside until we're ready to use them. But we have to get our cake ready first. So I am just using, this is forest green with a little bit of black mixed in. And I might have even put in just a touch of um, royal blue. Just a little bit maybe. This was a couple weeks ago, so I can't remember exactly. But it was for sure forest green with a little touch of black to get the depth. And these cakes obviously were already filled and crumb coated and we're just smoothing it out using my plastic smoothers. You can use whatever smoothers you prefer. These are just my smoothers of choice. And pull in that rim on the top and then do the same thing on the bottom. But the difference on this one is that I'm doing white on the bottom or on the sides and green on the top because you're gonna be able to see the green on the top if you are looking at down at the cake. That top edge, I wanted it to blend in with the bottom tier, or with the top tier, I'm sorry. But I'm using the white on the sides because if you can see through the panels of chocolate, I didn't want them to be green. So I'm just using both the colors. And instead of smoothing it across the top, I'm just kind of smoothing it down on the side. And I attached these while it was still, still not um, set up. It wasn't crusted over yet. If you, your buttercream is crusted over, then you'll want to just put a little buttercream on the back of the pieces of chocolate before you attach them. And just line them up all the way around the cake. And I just set that in the refrigerator to firm up and to cool. Not cool. To firm up and crust over and to chill. Yeah, I did mean cool. To chill. <laughs> Sorry. While I'm working on the moss. Now I will attach the link for this recipe below. I will actually probably just go ahead and put it in the description of this video. But what it basically is, is one egg, baking powder, flour, granulated sugar, and I'm missing one. Honey. That honey right there. <laughs> like I said, I'll put the measurements in the description box, but you're basically mixing these together. You mix the egg first and get it frothy and then add the rest of the ingredients. And then we'll just put it in a bowl once it's incorporated and the flour is folded in, put it in a bowl and microwave safe bowl and cook it in there until you have a moss. It's very fluffy and spongy and when you pull apart you have moss. Also, don't forget your food coloring. You could do whatever color you want, honestly. You could do whatever color you want. But I wanted to go with that green. Green was the theme. Green's been the theme for a couple of cakes recently. I think I'm on a trend here. I need to do some other colors. Suge suggest some colors. What colors would you guys like to see? Leave me a message, leave me a comment, and uh, we'll see what we can come up with. I need some inspiration sometimes. What do you guys want to see when it comes to color? And that's what it looks like before I fold in the flour. It's runny. It's incorporated, but runny, and it's the color that I want. Mm -hmm. 
And now we're gonna incorporate our flour. You just put it in and just fold it in. Kind of like with macarons, just kind of gently scrape around the outside and bring it in towards the middle. It might take a little, a few more minutes to mix it up, but you don't want to lose, you know, those air bubbles that you created, which is going to give it the mossy, mossy look and feel. And here I'm putting it in my microwave safe bowl. And I'm trying to make sure that I have most of it on the bottom, not on the side of the bowl, but get it down to the bottom. Wrap it with some plastic wrap before you put it in your microwave. And while that's going, and cooling, because you need to let it cool before you use it, I'm going to go ahead and stack my top tier on top of my bottom tier. And since these are smaller cakes, I just used three straws. I use up to five, typically. Unless I'm doing a larger tier, then I will add some, like three, in between the outside five. And these straws just needed to be cut maybe about a quarter of an inch shorter, so I went ahead and did that, add a little buttercream. And this tier is chilled in the freezer for uh, I was about 20 minutes so that I can kind of pick it up and lift it on and I don't know if you noticed there that I kind of push down on the board it's a plastic corrugated board that I had the cake on and I just kind of hold one side put it on the edge of your table and um, push down on the other side to kind of release it from the board before I lifted it up and I wanted to add a little texture I thought it needed a little bit more so I just wadded up my pe paper towel and I'm just kind of sponging it on there. Just a little bit of texture. You know, I love texture. Now our moss is ready and we're gonna remove it from the bowl. And you can see here, it's fluffed up some. It's very soft and gushy. <laughs> and you just pull it apart and you have your little pieces of moss. And you can stick it to your buttercream if it's still not crusted over. And if it is crusted over, then you can just add a little buttercream to the back of a piece and just attach it that way. Very easy. It's a very simple, organic looking kind of decoration for a cake. I really like this. I might try this in other colors. That would be fun too. Let me think on that. Then I added some to the bottom too, just to tie it together. You always have to tie your cakes together if you can, just so it makes sense. Now I'm just zhuzhing it up with some of these gold gumballs. These I just got at the store. You can get them at Walmart. Um, craft stores have them in different colors. I could have made chocolate spheres, but honestly I ran out of time and I wanted to incorporate some gold. So I just used those and I think they work just fine. And then I'm just using some of these florals. I don't even know what these are. They're um, silk flowers. If you can tell me what these are, please do. I just don't know what they're called. I think some of you told me one other time, but I can't remember. And I just wanted them to kind of drape down the side a little bit. It's kind of like a foresty theme. I thought that worked with the moss pretty good. And it brought the green and the um, white of the white chocolate together. And then just to do the gold splatter, I just mixed uh, gold luster dust with some Everclear. Get it to a consistency where you can splatter it. Dip your brush in it and basically just throw it at your cake. I wanted a lot of it on this time, and I'm doing it at an angle in between the, de the decorations from the top and the bottom. And yes, I did have to wipe off the wall when I was done. <laughs> it gets everywhere, but it's worth it. If you don't want to use a brush, you can use a toothbrush. You're going to get more of a smaller speckled effect, and I was kind of going for the splatter. So I hope you liked it, guys. Please take time to like, share, subscribe. We're getting close to 100K. Share my page, subscribe, get those numbers up. That would be really awesome. Kind of a bucket list. And I appreciate you watching it. So thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch my video. And if you'd like to watch some other videos, go ahead and click on the link to one of these other videos shown here. And if you would like to check out my other social media, I am on Facebook and Instagram under the same name, Sophisticates by Mary. And please take the time to share, like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so that you know when I upload another video. Thank you so much, and we'll catch you on the next tutorial.